Hello everyone, thank you so much for attending today. Uh, my name is Ronnie Rios, I'm a Senior Consulting Engineer here at FileMaker, and we have a great webinar for you today. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a FileMaker server and, and why it really should be in uh, your environment and hosting all of your applications. Now before we get started, uh, I'd like to spend a few minutes um, just covering a, a few uh, brief housekeeping notes. For the best experience, we strongly recommend that you participate in this web seminar with at least a broadband connection. If you have any problems or require online assistance at any point, please contact Citrix Technical Support at 888-259-8414. Again, that number is 888-259-8414. Now, during today's uh, presentation, you're going to have the opportunity to type in questions. So let's take a, a, a brief moment and uh, talk about how you can enter your questions. Simply go to the, to the control panel, click on the questions section, enter your question, and click on the send button. Uh, we'll cover as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation, but remember, you do not have to wait until the end of the presentation to submit your questions. So with that, let's get started. Now, I like to start uh, with a little story. And this is a story that we hear a lot here at FileMaker from customers all over the world. So the, for, the, for the first few minutes, uh, we're going to pretend that uh, I am the owner and manager of a small but growing landscaping company. And I've probably heard about FileMaker in one of these webinars, not unlike this one. And with that knowledge, I created a little app over here that's, that's been helping me manage my business. And it's been doing great so far. As you can see, this little app, this little file lives here on my desktop. It's on my computer. And I've been uh, uh, managing all of our customers' information, our work orders, and things like that. And it's been, been a great amount of help. Now, as a manager, I know that to really take advantage of this information uh, and, and this app, this information really needs to be in the hands of everybody in my team, not just myself. So I need to be able to share this information, make sure that everybody has access to it in real time, no matter where they are. So I got a lot of employees, got a few employees who are out, uh, out in the field who are talking with customers. I'd love to empower them with that information. So that webinar that I attended, I learned that I can quickly share information uh, from one of my FileMaker uh, apps here, directly from my computer, one of the options, the built-in options here, have over here is share with FileMaker clients. And this enables what we call peer-to-peer -peer sharing. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn that on. And with that, my computer becomes the host. I am now sharing this information, this entire app, with anybody who's running, who has a Mac or a Windows computer, or even an iOS device, like an iPhone or an iPad. As a matter of fact, I've got an iPad over here, and I'd like to share the screen and show it to you. So I've got an iPad over here. Let's pretend that this iPad is in the hand of uh, one of our employees or out in, uh, out in the field, and it's already downloaded the FileMaker Go app that's freely available from the iTunes App Store. With that, I can navigate over here look at my computer, and find the app that I created. If I tap on it, you'll notice I have the exact same user interface, the exact same access to the data that I have on my computer. And this is remotely from, a, uh, from an iOS device like this iPad. Not only am I looking at this, it's not really a copy of the data that I have on my computer, it's really, it's a live feed of it. It's like a window into the, the information that's on my computer. So much so that uh, here from the iPad, for example, can tap into this into this field, change, for example, Doris's last name to I'll change it here to Rojas, for example. And as soon as I change change the data, you'll notice it automatically changes here on my computer. And guess what? It works in both directions. So back at the office, we say, well, no, that's not Doris's last name. Her last name is, I don't know, Doe. As soon as about, you'll notice it automatically changes here on the fly out there. So I've, I've empowered all of my employees to have access to the data no matter where they are, no matter what device they're using. It could be an iPhone, an iPad, a uh, Mac computer or a Windows computer, doesn't really matter. They have live access to this, to this information. And again, this is what we call peer-to-peer -peer sharing. My computer, my desktop computer, is the host. Now, as quick and easy as that peer-to-peer -peer sharing is, it does have some limitations. So first of all, this file over here, as you can see, it lives here on my computer. So it lives on my hard drive, lives on, on my computer. So that means I am responsible for it. So I am resp responsible, for example, for backups, making sure that we have accurate and timely copies of this information. Because if something ever happens to this computer, then we might lose valuable information. 
The other thing is that in order for this to work, my computer has to be on. And not just on, not just sleeping, the computer has to be on. FileMaker Pro has to be running, and my app has to be open as well. So this means that if on Friday afternoon, because I'm the boss, and I want to leave a little bit early, I try to do that, and I try to close the app, I get this message. It says that there are other people who are connected to it. And if I close it, everybody else is going to have to close and close the app, and will no longer have access to the information. So that means that if I go early on Friday, well, that means everybody else stops working too, and that kind of defeats the purpose, right? So there's, even though there's a really great advantage here to peer-to-peer -to -peer sharing, there are definitely some drawbacks here. So let's look at some of the great solutions, uh, a better solution for this. So first, let's look at what we have so far. So right now, I've learned that I can build and run my solutions using FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Pro Advanced directly from my desktop computer, either using a Mac or a Windows computer. I've learned that I can share the solution very easily using peer-to-peer -peer sharing to anybody who has another Mac or a Windows computer or an iOS device, like an iPhone or an iPad, using the freely available FileMaker Go app you can download from the iTunes App Store. And again, this is called peer-to-peer -peer sharing. So I can share it to FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Go users, but I also have a limitation. I can only have up to five connected users at any given time. And I probably want my, my company to grow a little bit more than five users, right? So I've got a problem. So if, right now, you know, if, if, I, if I need a more reliable, high-performance access to my data, that doesn't limit the number of simultaneous users, but I need something else. And we're in a FileMaker, FileMaker Server webinar, so you probably guess what the answer is. Let's talk a little bit more about what FileMaker Server actually is. So FileMaker Server is actually software for managing and sharing your database solution files that can then be accessed from FileMaker Pro on desktop computers like a Mac or Windows, from FileMaker Go from uh, iOS devices like the iPhone and the iPad, or using FileMaker Web Direct which is from a browser, which is our web uh, our web client. Our software this is software also gets installed on a computer. So FileMaker Server um, needs to get installed on a computer of your choosing. And we'll, this computer is what we normally refer to as a server, which is just another fancy word for a, a computer that is dedicated to providing services. Now, FileMaker Server is not just one piece of software. It's actually composed of several different components that work together in order to manage and share your solutions. So let's take a few minutes to talk about these components. The first component that most people are familiar with is called the Administrative Console. And the Admin Console, for short, uh, it's a web application that allows us to set up and configure FileMaker Server. Then we've got the database server. And this is the component that actually uh, shares and, and uh, makes our applications available to all of the users. Then if, we're, if we are deploying to, uh, to web users, we'll also need to, to utilize the web publishing engine. The web publishing engine talks to the database server and takes that information and converts it into a format that web browsers can understand. In order to, to get that information to the web browser, and we also need a web server that communicates with the web publishing engine to a small piece of software that we like to call the web server module. And if our solutions are going to be using, uh, are going to be uh, utilizing our PHP API, then a PHP engine is required in order to interpret the code. So let's take a quick look at how the FileMaker server fits inside of the FileMaker platform itself. So the FileMaker platform is really a full line of products that, that uh, gives you all the tools that you need to create uh, custom business apps that can really transform your business. Now, uh, you create apps with FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Pro Advanced on your desktop computer, being a Mac or Windows. And this is also how you can uh, run your, your apps, uh, but also the way you share it with small, uh, with small teams, just like we saw earlier using the peer-to-peer -peer sharing. Now, for teams of five or more, uh, people, you're going to want to use FileMaker Server to share your solutions. To run your solutions from an iPad or an iPhone, you use the free FileMaker Go app that's available from the App Store. And finally, to access your solution via a web browser, you use FileMaker Web Direct, which is available as part of FileMaker Server. So as you can see, FileMaker Server is kind of really the, the heart and soul of the FileMaker platform that really makes available and possible a lot of the great things that we love about the FileMaker platform. So you're probably asking yourself, do I really need FileMaker Server? Well, if you've been asking yourself, 
um, how to do any of these things, and you probably have, then you definitely need to file make a server. Right? If you ever wondered uh, who's been accessing your data, how and from where, uh, if you ever want to remotely monitor your and administrate your databases, or securely store all the information, make sure that everything is, is not only securely stored, but also securely transmitted over the wire, especially when you're sharing over the internet. If you ever want to automate your backups and make sure that, that they are performed in a timely manner, that they're done correctly, or if you ever wanted to deploy interactive solutions to a web browser without the need of learning how to program for the web browser, then Fomica Server definitely should be in your environment, should be hosting all of your solutions. So let's talk a little bit more in depth about some of these uh, great benefits. So back to our story. Uh, I have just one solution, right? I've created one little app, and it's been helping me so far to manage our customers and also the workers and kind of the flow of our business. And I know that down the, down the road, I'm going to want to create new apps, things that help us in other areas. I'll probably make one to uh, help us manage our, uh, our employees and maybe track of the assets and things like that. So as our business grows, our needs will as well will have more apps. And each one of those, if I continue the way I am, will be a different file, an additional file on my computer, and an additional window. It can be hard for me to administrate that. Fomica Server helps us by simplifying the entire process. It's very easy for us to administrate all of our solutions using the administrative console that we spoke about earlier. And it uh, allows us to uh, not only administrate all of them, manage them, but also displace things like server statistics and uh, view um, uh, log entries for every single action that happens on our server. And all of that with a very nice and easy to use interface that is the admin console. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take a moment uh, or two just to show you how simple and really nice to, to use the admin console is. I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this here for a second. I'm going to go here, and I mentioned earlier the admin console is a web app, it's a web application. So you can see I've got my web browser here, and I've already logged in here to FileMaker, uh, to the FileMaker service uh, admin console. As soon as I log in, I get all this great information, an overview of the health of my server. I can see information about the server over here, and then the status of the other components that make up FileMaker server. Over here, I can also see all the different files that I have currently hosted on FileMaker server. All these uh, files are different applications that are being hosted from my one server. For any one of these, I can uh, I can open and close them, I can verify, I can download a copy of any one of those, I can pause its operation, I can even send a message to all the users that are connected to that one application. And if I no longer need that one app, I can also remove it directly here from the admin console. From here, I can also look at statistics. I can uh, keep track of the performance and health of my server. For example, I see that there is a lot of activity over here, so I can zoom in and have a better view of what was going on there. I even have a log view to list here all, every single event that's happened on my server. As a matter of fact, if I want to see, for example, who's been accessing our invoicing solution today, I can see everybody who's logged in, from what type of device, what their IP address, and so forth. So this is a quick view of the admin console. As you can see, FileMaker Server provides us all the tools necessary to very easily administrate and manage our server. So let's talk about growing in our business, right? Let's talk about scale. So I need to ask myself as a, as a business owner and manager, you know, how will my business be effective if my solutions can't grow with us? Well, in our example earlier, using peer-to-peer, -peer, I got right, we already know that I, I uh, have a limit of five connected users. The FileMaker server allows me to host up to 125 solution files, and it can have hundreds of connected users all at the same time. And they can come in from either desktop computers and mobile devices or web browsers if they want to. So I'm assured that as our business grows, our solutions will be able to keep up with the demand and the growing aspect of our business. Now what about security? Security is extremely important. We have to make sure that our data is being protected at all times. And FileMaker has an enormous amount of features that allows us to protect that, that, that data, not just when it's uh, being stored, but also when it's being transmitted. I can take advantage of things like external server authentication, which allows me to take advantage of um, uh, directory services that I might already have in the organization, like Active Directory or Open Directory, to help our users uh, log in using the same credentials that they use for other systems that we might have in, our, in the organization. 
Public server also allows me to encrypt the information that's being transmitted over the wire using industry standard SSL encryption. And I can even verify to make sure that everything is being done correctly and make sure that the SSL encryption is being turned on with visual indicators just the same way as, as web browsers would tell us when we go into our uh, into our bank portals, for example, and uh, we can see that little padlock there that tells us that the information is being securely transmitted. And you in FileMaker Server 15, we also have proactive sec uh, security warnings. It lets uh, our users know exactly what's going on and, uh, and let them know that some of the actions they might be doing, whether or not they're uh, secure or not. And all done, very easy to use interface from the admin console. So matter of fact, I'd like to show you how quick and easy it is to turn on SSL encryption here from the admin console. I'm going to switch over here back here to the web browser and back into the admin console. This time I'm going to click here on the left where it says database server and I'm going to choose the security tab here on top. Down here we have an option that says use SSL for database connections. I'm going to turn this on and finally the server comes pre-installed with a self-signed certificate that's great for testing purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on, save the changes, Go back here to FileMaker Pro and I'm going to open up a database file that I have here on, on my server. And you'll notice that down here on the bottom left there's a little padlock. It's letting me know that the information that's being transmitted both from the computer, from my computer to the server and vice versa is being encrypted using SSL technology. Now once again I'm using an SSL certificate that came pre-installed with FileMaker Server to self-sign one. But when I do my final deployment I'm going to want to get uh, a certificate from one of the supported certi certificate authorities and install that. But for testing purposes, see how easy it is. I can go ahead and just turn that on and test that SSL is working and make sure that my information is being transmitted securely. So as you see, FileMaker Server has a lot of features that allows us to help uh, keep our information safe, not just when it's being stored, but also when it's being transmitted. Now let's talk about backups. And uh, you know, as a manager and owner of our little company, I, I need to ask myself, right, how much of, my, of our data am I willing to lose? How much is our data really worth? Because making sure that, that we have accurate uh, the copies of, of our information is paramount. So back in, in our little story, remember that our database has been living here on, my, on the desktop of my computer. And if anything were to happen to my computer and didn't have a copy of it, well, we'd lose a lot of information. It would be very valuable. FileMaker Server helps us by automating and having to schedule all the, all the backups, making sure that we're done at the right time but also done, done right as well. And for each one of these, these automated backups, I can keep multiple copies for each one of those schedules and I can, I can set them up for multiple time frames. And all of this done in a very, very easy manner, again, using the admin console. Why don't we take a moment to show you exactly how easy it is to set up a backup schedules here in FileMaker Server. We'll go back here to the admin console. And uh, this time, I'm going to click here on the left side where it says Schedules. You see, FileMaker here, FileMaker Server, my copy of FileMaker Server already has three backup schedules already set up. That's because every time you install FileMaker Server, it automatically configures these three backup schedules, a daily, an hourly, and a weekly. And we already enable, pre-enable the daily one for you. So just in case you forget to set up your backups, we got you covered with at least a daily backup. Let's pretend that I want to set up a new schedule. I want to back up all of our information, say, on a monthly basis, in addition to the daily that we already have. So I can quickly go over here to this little menu, create a new schedule, and I get here a list of options. So FileMaker Server can schedule different things, not just backups, but multiple different tasks over here. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to choose here backup as the reason here, the type here for this schedule. This next step, I can choose which database files I want to back up. I can let uh, all of them be chosen here, or I can choose which ones I want. I can have maybe uh, ones are uh, stored inside a particular folder, or I can just back uh, any particular file I want. Now, for now, I'm just going to back all of them, back, have all of them being backed up. Now I get to choose where I want these backup copies to be stored. Now this is the, my default. Uh, uh, the path here, the folder where I want to uh, uh, store them, but I can change that. I can even change it to a different volume on my server. So if I want to have all my backups stored on a separate uh, device, I can also set, uh, set that up just by changing here the folder. Now I can get to choose how many copies of these files I want to save for this particular schedule. 
So we're going to be uh, doing this on a monthly basis. So I think maybe we should keep 12 copies. That gives us a 12, uh, 12 month uh, backup. That sounds fair. And down here, I can also tell Famicom Server to uh, perform a, uh, uh, an integrity check on the file to make sure that the health of the file is, is, uh, is good. And I can also, if I want to specify that I want a clone copy of this file. A clone copy is a copy of the file uh, that has no data. So everything else except for the data. And there are good reasons to do that, but for now, we'll just leave those unchecked. All right, so now I can choose the frequency that I want the scheduled backup to, uh, to, perform, to be performed on. And I got a couple of options here, daily, weekly, or every specific amount of days. We'll do and choose that. And I can choose uh, when I want this backup to start. We'll leave that date there. Then over here, I can choose at what time I want the schedule backup to, to run at. And I want to run where nobody's uh, here at the office. Just like, uh, 11 30 at night sounds about, sounds good, sounds reasonable. And down here, I can choose what the interval in days, how many uh, days will pass before uh, between each one of these backups. So we want this monthly, so I'm going to choose uh, 30 days. I should do this roughly every month. Then now over here, I can uh, just simply name it. I'll do something very, very simple. Just call it monthly. And down here, I can tell FileMaker to send me an email notification. Let me know how this task is, is being run. Make sure that there's uh, no errors or anything like that. Uh, I'll leave that unchecked for now. And uh, we'll leave here the enable option turned on. I can hear a summary of all the options that we chose. And that's it. Just finished. Now I've got a monthly backup schedule that runs every 30 days and start here today at 11.30 p.m. As easy as that, I've just set up an automated schedule backup that takes care of all of our backups every month, in addition to the daily one that we already have. So you saw how quick and easy it is to set up backups here in FileMaker Server, and see how easy it is to have FileMaker Server take care of and uh, take care of our backups, being automated and on a schedule basis, and keeping uh, keeping multiple copies of that. Now let's talk about deploying your solutions to the web browser. I mean, and a very very uh, amazing technology that's built into FileMaker Server is FileMaker WebDirect, and this allows us to take uh, our solutions and deploy them as in, in the web browser. As if, they, as if they were desktop style solutions. With the same interactivity that we've come to expect from a FileMaker, a Pro or a Go, but all inside of a web browser. And all this with no web programming whatsoever. And you get all these great benefits that you get in FileMaker Pro and FileMaker Go, like live data updates and, uh, and uh, live solution updates as well. And new in FileMaker 15, a support for mobile, uh, for mobile phones as well. So even browsers on your mobile phone support FileMaker WebDirect and get access to your information in real time. Now, I'll show you a quick demonstration of this in a few minutes, but first, let's get back to our original story. So, I've been running so far, right, our little application uh, here from my computer, and we've learned how we can share this very quickly using peer-to-peer -peer sharing, and have access, and give access to, uh, to my app, to all of my employees, whether or not they're on a Mac, or uh, on a Windows computer, or an iOS device. They have a lot of limitations. So I've learned about FileMaker Server, and uh, I've already deployed FileMaker Server, and I have it installed, and now I need to move my app from my computer to our newly deployed FileMaker Server. So I'm going to choose, once again, here from the Share menu, and this time I'm going to choose Upload to FileMaker Server. Click OK. It needs to close the file. I'll choose Our Server, and upload the file. And that's it. What you're seeing here is no longer the local version of the file. This is the hosted version of my file. This application is being hosted on FileMaker Server. And I know that because here next to the name of the file, it says has the name of my server. And down here at the bottom left, remember the little padlock, letting me know that the information is being encrypted uh, from my computer back to the server and back, uh, back again. So this file that's over here on my desktop, I no longer need it. So if anything were to happen to this file, completely by accident, I assure you, I'd be completely secure. My information is being taken care of by FileMaker Server. It's even being backed up on a daily and even monthly basis. And just like with peer-to-peer, -peer, I still have access to this information from other devices. So uh, back here to my iPad, I can now navigate here to our server. 
and open up the solution the exact same way. So you can see the exact same information looks the exact, exact same way with one minor difference. You'll notice that here, now I've got a little padlock that's letting me know that this information is being transmitted securely. So as easy as that, we've uh, grown, outgrown a lot of the uh, limitations that we have from peer to peer. And we've also added a lot of other great capabilities. And I promised you I was going to show you FileMaker Web Direct, so why don't I go ahead and show you that real quick. So I want to also uh, give access to, uh, to other employees who can access it from maybe from their home using the web browser. So I'm going to, tell, I'm going to turn on the FileMaker Web Direct technology. You do that directly here from FileMaker Pro. You choose here sharing, configure for FileMaker Web Direct, and just simply turn that on. And as easy as that, now anybody with a web browser can navigate to our web portal. And access our application from the web browser. And as you can see, it's the exact same information put in the web browser. And it's fully live. They can move through the records, go into here, change Doris's last name once again, change it back here to Smith. And you can see how the information changes everywhere. Right? And it works in both directions. If I go back here into the iPad and I change this here to, I don't know. You notice that here, the web browser data automatically changes. Now, a lot of people ask me, well, how, how easy it really is it to program for develop here for FileMaker Web Direct? So I'm going to take a minute or two just to show you how quick and easy it really is, and then you don't really need to know anything about web programming whatsoever. I'm going to go back here to FileMaker, FileMaker Pro on my computer, and I'm going to click here on the Edit Layout button, which puts me in what we call Layout Mode. This is the mode in which I can make changes to the design of our application. So I'm going to make a change here that you can probably notice. I'm going to do something really ugly. I'm going to move that there. Maybe we'll do choose an ugly. Yeah, that's ugly enough. That way we can notice it. And I'm simply going to save the changes here on our application. Nothing else. And you notice how it automatically changes everywhere, including on the web browser. Isn't that amazing? So not only changes in the data are propagated everywhere, including in the web browser, but also changes in the design of our application. This ensures that everybody on my team has the latest version of the app, no matter what device they're using, no matter how they're accessing this information. Now that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. So back to our story here. So now with FileMaker Server, I have learned a couple of things. I'm still designing and building our solutions using FileMaker Pro and FileMaker Pro Advanced from my desktop computer. But now I've deployed and, and deploying and managing our solutions using FileMaker Server, which now allows me to run these solutions from mobile devices like the iPhone and the iPad using the FileMaker Go app, from Mac computers and, and Windows computers using FileMaker Pro, and now also from web browsers using the FileMaker Web Direct technology that's part of FileMaker Server. So with this, it's very easy for me to manage all of our solutions. We know it's going to scale with our business, and all the information is securely stored and protected, not just the way it's being stored, but also the way it's being transmitted. And we have full access to information from a web browser using Islamic Web Direct technology. So have a quick look at how this compares with peer-to-peer, -peer, as we saw earlier. So the limitation that I had uh, earlier with just five users goes away. Have as many users as I want connected. Now with FileMaker Server, I've got access to statistics and law to keep track of the health of my server. I know the information is being transmitted over the wire, especially over the internet. It's being done in a secure manner. Very easy to set up backups and done automated and on a scheduled basis with multiple time frames. And I can get access to information from, from modern web browsers using the FileMaker Web Direct technology. So probably now ask yourself, well, what do I need in order to run FileMaker Server? Let's talk about some of the system requirements. On the operating system uh, side, FileMaker Server can run on either Mac or Windows platform. On the Mac side, we support uh, OS 10, 10.10 or 10.11. On the Windows side, it can run on either Windows Server 2008 R2 or Windows Server 2012 R2. The hardware requirements. At a minimum, FileMaker Server requires a dual core CPU with four gigs of RAM. However, we do recommend a four core CPU with eight gigabytes of RAM and in both situations, at least uh, 80 gig uh, storage uh, capacity, at least 10 gigabytes of free space at any given time. 
Uh, your own deployment might uh, require a little bit of higher uh, hardware requirements depending on your solution than the amount of users you might have, but these are the recommended uh, requirements as far as, as far as hardware goes. I'd like to share with you before, before uh, we go into the Q&A, some additional resources that you might find helpful when uh, looking at FileMaker Server. If you haven't already, I highly recommend that you create an account in FileMaker Community. This is a, a great uh, a place to uh, interact with other FileMaker, uh, FileMaker users all around the world. FileMaker Community is a portal on our website that uh, not only gives you access to uh, communicate and collaborate with other developers pretty much everywhere in the world, but it also allows you to uh, share your own experiences and have access to technical resources. You've got uh, an enormous amount of uh, tech reads and how-to articles. Uh, you can uh, download additional resources. You can uh, see product updates. And in addition to that, all, you know, all of that is free, but we also have what we call the FileMaker Developer Subscription, which is a paid version of the FileMaker community. It's about $99 a year and has a lot of great benefits. One of my favorites is that it includes a developer version of FileMaker Server. So you get a license to FileMaker Server for all your development needs. So it's a great way to get started with FileMaker Server at an inexpensive price. What about training? We've got you covered there as well. One of my favorite training resources has to be the FileMaker Training Series. And uh, they're, free, they're available from our website, uh, both available on uh, ebook formats. And we've got two versions of the FileMaker training series, the basics and the advanced. The basics, the basics is exactly what the name implies. It really is for those who are just getting started. Uh, it starts out with really assuming you know nothing about development or databases and walks you through uh, step by step, really self-paced uh, to the point where you, uh, you know enough to, to get started. It's freely available from our website, uh, once again, as an ebook. The FileMaker Training Series Advanced, it's a little bit more for the intermediate and advanced developers. And it goes into a deeper dive into the platform, talking about a lot of other things like the scripting engine and the calculation engine, and also, obviously, about FileMaker Server and multiple ways of deploying that. The FileMaker Training Series Advanced is also the cornerstone of the FileMaker uh, certi uh, certification test for developers. Some additional resources that you might find helpful. Uh, at any point, you can download a, a, a trial version of FileMaker 15 from our website. A complete free trial, fully functional. Anytime you want, you can go ahead and download it. The FileMaker uh, Server 15 Getting Started Guide is an amazing document that uh, helps you get quickly started on not only a configuring, but also deploying FileMaker Server in your own environment. The general hardware considerations uh, for FileMaker Server uh, is a great resource. To, uh, Gives you kind of all the ins and outs to consider when configuring hardware that will, that will be uh, hosting FileMaker Server software. And finally, if you're thinking about uh, developing and deploying solutions using FileMaker WebDirect, I highly recommend the FileMaker 15 WebDirect Guide. Uh, this uh, document is chock full of great information. It starts out explaining uh, how the FileMaker WebDirect technology works, and it also gives you all the tips that you need. Uh, to kind of look out for, for those uh, uh, things, special considerations uh, when uh, developing and deploying with uh, this great technology. Great, so uh, with that, as promised, we'll go ahead and open up here for questions. If you have not yet, uh, actually please submit your questions at this point, and I'll go ahead and uh, start answering as many questions as we can here uh, today. So I've got first question over here, it's about uh, FileMaker Web Direct. Um, that's, that's, that's FileMaker Web Direct. It's FileMaker Server required for FileMaker Web Direct to work. Can I will it not work with peer to peer? Um, so the answer is yes. FileMaker Web Direct uh, is a component, it's part of FileMaker Server. So uh, FileMaker Server is required in order to have uh, in order to have uh, the FileMaker. Uh, FileMaker Web Direct running. So in order to deploy solutions using FileMaker Web Direct, FileMaker Server is uh, required. Um, uh, got a question here about uh, requirements. Uh, let's take this one. Uh, somebody's asking, uh, is it okay to run a FileMaker Server on the same machine that a user will be using FileMaker Pro on? Uh, we highly recommend that you avoid this, uh, that you uh, run FileMaker Server on its own dedicated machine. And this machine could be a virtual machine, it can also be a physical machine. 
we highly recommend that Pomica server be installed on a computer which is only dedicated for hosting and running Pomica server. Uh, we don't, you, you know, you have a, a database engine running there. You really don't want it competing with other resources. And you also want to make sure that if a user does something uh, by accident, you don't want to bring the entire server down uh, by any action that might uh, that might that the user might do. So we highly recommend that it runs on its own uh, computer. Uh, okay, I got a couple of questions here about storage. Uh, I'm going to try to answer these as best as I can to put them here together. Uh, so uh, basically, the question here is how does Fomica Server store? Where does it store uh, images um, like the images that we saw here in uh, in our uh, previous demo? Does it store it inside of the database, or does it store it externally? Uh, or does it store by a URL? So um, by default, in, in uh, the Fomica platform, to store binary information like images, videos, and audio, we use a, a type of field that we call the container field. And container fields can store pretty much anything, any type of file that you want. By default, when you create a container field, uh, the default configuration is to have that data, that file that you're dropping into that field, to be stored inside of the database file. That being said, you also have the option to reconfigure that field and change the option to what's called external storage. So what Apotheca Server does whenever you drag and drop a file onto that container field is that a link uh, gets created to that file, a copy of that file is just sent to the server, the server then stores it on a, uh, on, its, on creates its own directory which you can configure, creates its own directory, and then only a link to that file is stored inside of the FileMaker file itself. Uh, that, but the user uh, doesn't see any of this happen. To them, the, the image or the file is stored inside of that container and just looks exactly the same way. Uh, they, they see uh, no difference. Uh, but on the back end, all the information is being stored outside of the database. And you even have the option to turn on encryption so that these files are stored outside of the database can be encrypted and only be accessed through FileMaker. So only, uh, only through using the security in FileMaker could you access the contents of that file. Um, good. Uh, Jeff is asking us a little bit more about the clone feature, cloning the files. So uh, a clone of a file is basically a copy of the file that has no data. It conserves everything else about the file. So all of your layouts right, are there, your scripts and calculations, all that, uh, how the data is laid out, right? so the definitions of the tables and the fields, all those things are still there. It's good every once in a while, it's a good practice, to keep an empty, uh, you know, keep that empty vessel, that clone file, and create one every once in a while, just in case of an emergency. If uh, in case of a disaster, you want to be able to take a, a file that might be corrupted, be able to extract the data, and then load it onto a good known copy that you might have, in this case, a clone. So every once in a while, it's just good to have to create a, a clone copy of your file, uh, just to keep there in, in the case of a disaster. Um, questions here, is that Java required? Uh, Java is required on the server machine, and there are some processes in the Fomica server that do require Java. That being said, it does not require uh, WebStart or any of the uh, client components that you would normally see when running in a web browser. Great. Uh, other questions here about deployment uh, outside of the network. There's a couple of questions here, so I'll try to answer them uh, uh, together about deploying and accessing uh, your solutions from outside of your network, right? Um, some questions here about, there's one about here VPN, so I'll try to answer all these questions together. So uh, the main question is, uh, can you and how do you access a solution uh, from outside of your network if a server is uh, being hosted internally, right? So we'll go with, I've got an office and uh, inside of our network, we've got a, a server, we've got a computer where we have FileMaker server deployed. We have uh, uh, solutions that are being hosted there. And I want some of my employees who are out in the field to be able to access this information that's being stored here in our network, right? Over the internet. So FileMaker server does not make any distinction between remote and local users. It really doesn't care. It, it treats them exactly the same way. As a matter of fact, you don't have to make any configuration or any changes in FileMaker server in order to uh, to give access to users from the outside. The changes that need to be done really have to do on a network level. 
So you'll need to make changes likely on uh, at your router or your at your network devices in order to route the traffic that's coming from the outside to your network and route it correctly to your FileMaker server uh, computer, to the FileMaker machine, this, this, the machine that's hosting FileMaker server. And usually this is done uh, on server, on, a, on your router. Uh, you might use VPN, it's completely supported. VPN is a, it's an easy way for you to uh, tunnel the information and give a, a remote access to local resources. But most of the time, uh, a lot of our users just uh, simply configure their router and do what's called the port forwarding. Uh, it's FileMaker operates on a specific port, so there are just four ports that a FileMaker the server requires in order to operate. And by just by doing port forwarding uh, to, those, uh, to those ports, uh, users that are outside of your network can have access to uh, the uh, internal FileMaker server. Uh, on our website, on our support side, you can do uh, a quick search for deploying and accessing solutions remotely and kind of give a, a quick overview of the things that need to be done uh, on your network in, in order for this to work. Great, we got, let's see, we'll take uh, one or two more questions over here. Uh, let's see, we got a question here uh, about SSL encryption. Oh, well, there's actually two questions here about, uh, about encryption. Um, does FileMaker support encryption, uh, storing the database encrypted? Um, so yes, so what that is called, is normally called in the industry uh, uh, encryption at rest. And what this means is that your database file when it's being stored, when it's being hosted uh, on the server computer, it's fully encrypted. And uh, the FileMaker platform, the entire FileMaker platform supports encryption at rest. Uh, we use a very strong encryption uh, algorithm. We use AES with a 256-bit uh, key. And once your file is encrypted, you can upload it and host it on FileMaker server and uh, keep that safe. So if you add to that SSL encryption, which is being the data being transmitted, you've got a full circle, full circle of uh, encryption uh, to all your data, right? End-to-end uh, uh, -end encryption of all of your information. All right. Well, I'll do one last uh, question over here. Uh, it's about the requirements. Uh, can FileMaker server run on a on a on a Mac? Uh, yes, it can. Uh, we briefly went over the uh, system requirements earlier. FileMaker Server will run on either a uh, Mac computer or a Windows computer as long as the operating systems that are uh, installed are one of those that, that uh, we currently uh, support. Very good. Uh, well, with that, uh, that's all the time that we have here today. So we'll, with that, we'll uh, end our uh, webinar. Thank you so much here for uh, being uh, with us today. And uh, if you can uh, catch a pre-recorded version of uh, this webinar and others like it on our website any given time, you can go to uh, filemaker.com uh, slash learning and learn more about the platform. Thank you so much again for your time and have a great rest of the day.